A week ago, I made a video on how to build over $100,000 in business lines of credit quickly. I told you that it was critical to set your business up correctly with a proper business phone and business address in that video. You guys asked me for more details, so here they are. Building your business credit quick, following these essential steps. All this and more in today's video. Hello and welcome to Stephen Carlson Show. I'm Stephen Carlson. I'm a tech entrepreneur, real estate investor, author, YouTuber, and volunteer paramedic. It is critical to establish a solid foundation for your business as you start to build your credit. For starters, commercial addresses help you get your business credibility both from your customer and from your lender. Putting aside the credibility aspects, many banks and merchant services generally just don't accept any businesses that are using residential or P.O. box addresses as their legal address for their LLC or corporation. You know, think of it this way. The lender needs to verify that you are a legitimate business and not a fly-by-night scammer. If your business has been open for multiple years, then you already have established some business lines of credit that they can verify you with. They also have the option of going to Google or Yelp and reading reviews about your business. But you know, if you're brand new and you have no business credit and little to no reputation in town, the lender is kind of left with very few options to research you and verify you are a legitimate business. Now, while this is not a foolproof method, a quick and easy method for the lenders is for them to verify that your mailing address is a legitimate business address and it is zoned in a business commercial zone within your town. Many lenders have direct connections to the United States Postal Service database where they can enter in your address that you give them and it's going to return telling them if you have a residential property, commercial property, or a private mailbox address. More on that later. Now, while not all lenders require a commercial mailing address, most are going to deny you if you use your personal home address and don't tell them. Now, although home addresses can be used as a registered agent when you set up your company with the state, that address is going to be public matter and it's going to be information that may not want to be released. It brings up security and privacy issues where everybody knows where you live. Finally, in some regions, the homeowners associations may not allow you to have a business within their residential area, but we can put all the HOA stuff aside. Your business must have a corporate address with a landline phone number. A home address and cell phone just won't cut it. Now, if you don't have a physical workplace just yet, a virtual office with a local VoIP system might be exactly what you need. Note that your business phone number should be listed on the 411 directories under your business name, not under your personal name of Johnny Smith. Now, we've already talked about how important your business address is and why it should be a physical brick and mortar building zoned for business by the town, and it must be deliverable to physical address where mail and packages can be delivered. Okay, now it's time to actually cover how to get one of these addresses and what you should look for. But first, if you would like to get one stock worth $1,600, please use the link down in the description for Weeble. As long as you deposit $100, they will give you your one free stock. And once the stock comes in, you can keep it or you can cash it out and use that free money to cover the cost of establishing your business address. Just like back in the days in Navy boot camp when my RDC told me to work smarter, not harder recruit. As far as I'm concerned, free money is working smarter. Now, your first best option for a business address is, well, of course, to rent or buy a building in an office suite that is zoned for business. The cost vastly depends on what area you're in. For example, in my rural town, one of my tech startups pays about $700 per month. The same size office in a larger metropolitan town might be $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 or more per month. Now, sometimes renting is the easiest option. Sometimes owning is the best option. And suppose that you are interested in purchasing a building that is zoned for business. In that case, there are many different options for you to acquire the property, including many ways that you can do it with no money down. But that really should be the focus of another video. If you want me to make a video on how you can get a commercial building with no money down, comment down below and let me know you want that video. Now, if purchasing or renting an office is just not within your budget, you still have a few options. 
The next best option is a virtual office. There are many businesses that offer these services. The basic concept is the service company will lease out part of a large office building and they will allow you to use their business address for your mail, packages, etc. Many also offer receptionist services and a lobby for your clients and even a few conference rooms that you can use to meet with your customers. These companies charge anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand per month. And that's mostly dependent upon how many of the optional services you choose. And of course, the cost of the real estate in the area. I know of many small law firms that go this route when they are first opening their practice. The next option, if a virtual office really isn't right for you, is you can get a mailbox at the UPS store or a similar service. Now, while this is not exactly a perfect solution, as the lender is going to know you're using UPS store address, usually it is better than listing your home address on all the paperwork. Personally, I love the UPS store option, and I currently have two boxes. One is where I send all my personal mail to, and it's in the city I currently live in now. And since I'm in the process of moving, I have already opened up one in the new city, so I can start getting new mail there as well. In my case, I use the UPS store primarily as personal mail and not really for my businesses, as all of my businesses have physical offices with employees and all the mail goes there. So what are some of the benefits of a UPS store? Well, first, it is a business zoned address. Plus, they can accept mail for you, UPS packages, FedEx, DHL, etc. And they can accept them for you even when you're not around and they have the ability to sign for packages. The only real downside to the UPS store is that it's sometimes a little bit more challenging to get a Dun & Bradstreet Dunn's number using a virtual office or a UPS store address. The reason for this is because these services are so relatively cheap to establish, even scammers are willing to front the expense to get these addresses. In comparison, most scammers are just not willing to invest the time and money into getting an actual brick and mortar business. But that does not mean that you cannot get your credit doing that. I've started businesses in the past with only a UPS store address. And a couple of the lenders in the beginning were like, um, is this a fake address? And you just tell them, it's a UPS store, it's where I get my mail. Usually they're okay with it as long as you're up front with it. Now that you've established your business address, let's tackle phone numbers. A cell phone or a home phone number as your main business line will get you flagged as unestablished in the credit reporting system. Don't ever give a personal cell phone or a residential phone as your primary business number. Of course, if you're dealing with clients, you're welcome to give your cell phone and tell them, hey, the office number's this, but if you wanna call me directly, here's my cell phone. Just remember that your main business phone number must be listed with the 411 directories for most credit issuers to lend and approve you. Lenders perceive an 800 or a toll-free number as kind of a sign of business credibility. Thankfully, gone are the days when purchasing one of these numbers was extremely expensive. Even if you're a one-person show using a UPS store as your mailing address and doing all of your work from the living room of your home, a toll-free number really provides the perception that you are an even bigger company. It is incredibly easy and thankfully inexpensive to set up a virtual phone system or a VoIP system with a toll-free number. You can even usually get a fax number or an e-fax with these systems as well. Luckily, most business VoIP systems will also submit your new phone number to the 411 directories, including the system that I use at my offices, which is GoToConnect by Jive. They provide the complete phone VoIP system, including desk phones for my staff in the office, iPhone and Android apps for all of us when we're on the go. Now, my cost for the phone system is about $250 a month. But keep in mind, that's for six desk phones, three phone, they call them phone trees. That's basically the press one for this, press two for that. And we also have multiple desk phones, multiple mobile only phones, all that's included. And I have like six different phone numbers. If you need a simple package, most of them start for about $50 a month. Now a bonus tip for you for staying this long through the video, a big pet peeve of mine is when businesses use their free Gmail account as their public facing email. I'm sorry, that's just not professional. 
Yes, I know it's slowly becoming more and more acceptable, but if you want to blend in with everyone else, okay. Or do you want to stand out? To look more credible to lenders, your business should have a functional website that reflects your brand, along with matching email addresses and a business fax number. A free email address at Gmail or at Hotmail or at Live or at Yahoo or whatever just does not give you the credibility rating. For example, one of my tech startups, our website is www.autocorner.com and all of my staff have at autocorner.com email addresses. Then for my real estate holding company, I have www.carlsoninc.com and I use at carlsoninc.com for all the email addresses. This is vitally important and is something that can help with building your business credit. Now, let me be clear here. Having your own domain name like carlsoninc.com does not actually factor into your credit score. No. Where this does help you is when the lender is kind of on the fence on whether or not he should lend to you. When they research your business, if they find a professional website, then many times that's going to kind of sway them towards approving your loan. Should I make a video on how inexpensive it is to get a website up and running within a few days? Why don't you comment down below and let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you click like and subscribe. Doing so really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it's something that I appreciate. Thanks and I'll see you on the next one.